You've been given a take home challenge for an interview process and you don't know where to start. In this video, I'll be taking you through one of my take home assignments and I'll be giving you a step by step guide to help you land that job. Hi guys, my name is Chilly and I'm a senior UX UI product designer based in London. I'm continuing this job hunting series. I've already created a video on how to write and structure your case studies and how to write a great resume. I will link those videos in the description below. I have been job hunting recently and I have a take home challenge to do now. I'll be sharing with you how I tackled this assignment and give you a step-by-step -step guide to help you with yours. Interviews are usually multiple stages and the stages are different for different companies. This interview for particular was for Beautypie, which is a cosmetic and skincare company. The first stage was about getting to know each other. They get to know me and I learn more about the company and their processes. Remember that getting a job is a two-way thing. It's also your chance to find out more about the company to see if it's a good fit for you. We talked through my experience and we did deep dives on my projects where they asked lots of in-depth questions about my working processes. That stage went well and the next stage I was given a design brief to work on and present in our next meeting. Usually I'm not a fan of take home assignments in job interviews for a few reasons, especially for those who have a lot of working experience. Sometimes companies brief problems that they actually have at the moment, so they're essentially getting free work out of candidates. Another reason is that it adds more stress to an already stressful time in your life. Job hunting is not easy, so you're not being judged in your best capacity. I look at this project and feel like it wasn't my best work. I had more ideas after the interview because I wasn't under so much pressure anymore. But I can see why it's useful for companies to set these challenges to compare everyone equally. But I believe this can be achieved with an in-depth portfolio review. The portfolio reviews I did when interviewing for Google and Meta were very intense, to the point where I was convinced that the interviews did not go well. But I got offers from both firms at the time. I believe they went well because I was well rested instead of spending hours stressing over fake projects. But design challenges are here to stay, so let me show you how to ace your next one and help you land that job. The point of a design challenge is to see how you think and solve problems as a designer within a small period of time. There isn't a lot of information to create an end-to-end -end case study. It's more to test how you think on the spot to make sure your skills match what the company is looking for. Before you begin, get as much information as you can. Sometimes you're briefed at the end of your first stage meeting, and this is a good chance to ask questions about the brief. But if they brief you via email, you can still ask these questions. Ask about their expectations, how much time they expect you to spend on it. I think spend a bit more time than they state so that your designs stand out. Ask about the fidelity of the designs. This helps you to identify what to focus on. As you don't have much time, you can decide if the company values the research, that's where you should focus on. If they value high fidelity designs and interactions, that's where you should spend most of your time. Treat it like you would a case study in your portfolio. This is the case study template that I always use. I have a video going through all the different steps and how to use this structure. I will link this template for you to download in the description below. So this was the brief I got from Beauty Pie and it's about the Beauty Pie membership. So one out of five of our site visitors become a member. Our target is for four out of five visitors to become a member. Also 60% of traffic lands on product pages. With that in mind, propose your plan and share prospective iterations to improve membership conversion for users landing on product pages. So use this case study to show your process from receiving, dealing with requirements throughout discovery phase and to hand over with engineers. How are you approaching this task? When is the right time to involve more stakeholders? When do you consider your work ready to build? And we encourage you to put together a narrative style deck for this task, but feel free to use any tools. So this aligns with my case study structure template. So this is Beauty Pie's website where they offer high quality products with quality ingredients at low prices because they cut out the middleman and retail markups. So the user is essentially getting wholesale prices for the same good quality ingredients. I think one of the first things to do is to try and understand why they are hiring. So at this very moment, Beauty Pie wanted to grow their mobile team. Even though this brief is about their website, I'll be showing my designs on a mobile to highlight those skills. Step one, I start by interrogating the data. What I normally do when I get a brief is I try to question the brief to understand if we're solving the right problem to get to the goal that we want. This will help guide you with your research, which research methods you choose, even though there are limitations as there's only so much you can do without real company data. 
I've added this to show that I'm very data driven in my solutions. I don't immediately jump to solution mode. I look at the data and I also use my previous knowledge of working in e-commerce to fill in any gaps. My first slide is that I interrogate the data. One out of five visitors become members. So this is where my previous knowledge in e-commerce comes in. We need to separate the numbers of users between the unique visitors and the returning visitors. This will give us a better comparison of those who are converting into members. From my knowledge, users who convert are usually returning after seeing the brand or the product at a few other touch points. So if it's five touch points, can we get that touch points down to three? The one in five who are converting, what is the average number of visits before converting? Also, where is the traffic coming from? 60% of the traffic lands on product pages. If it's coming directly onto a product page, my assumption is that they are clicking on ads. This can be via Instagram or affiliate links from influencers. This can also be directly on social media posts. So if a user is clicking on a post or an ad and they're not converting, that means there is a disconnect between what they see in the ad and what they see when they get to the product page. I would want to know what type of products receive the most traffic. This will tell us what people are most interested in and how we can better enhance their experience. Step two would be to do as much desk research as you can. This includes looking at reviews, complaints and competitor analysis. Focus on customer pain points. If you feel user research is important to the project, you can conduct a small user test with a few friends to show your user research skills. So here's a competitor analysis that I did. At first, I looked at the subscription model. Subscription models are quite popular and successful, but it is not your usual way of buying beauty products, especially for a brand that is competing with luxury brands. Here I looked at Fabletics and the Savage Fenty. I looked at how they explained the subscription model to a new user. Immediately, you can see the non-member price both these brands have surfaced their subscription model in a very similar way. Everything is surfaced, nothing is hidden, especially the price of the subscription. It's here £56, here it's £49. The difference between those two brands and Beauty Pie is that they surface their subscription price. The membership price is not hidden. Whereas on Beauty Pie, you've got these two prices, but when you click here, that's when you then learn that there is a membership price. Even though Beauty Pie's design is cleaner, it may be better to surface some of the information so that the user is aware about becoming a member before clicking on the member's price. That might create some disappointment to a user when they think they can get a deal. Here is the closed accordion and here is the open accordion. So you go from thinking you might be able to pay £10. I know it says member price here, but users don't always read the small print. This could cause friction as a user could feel like they're getting a good deal. But when you add £59 to the whole bill, then it makes the entire purchase more expensive. And this is for lip gloss. Step three, create a persona. I then interviewed a few users who have an interest in beauty and skincare products, but are not beauty by customers. From these users, I created a persona. So here is the persona. My biography or my goals is I enjoy keeping up with the latest fashion trend. Interested in learning more about skincare and the ingredients. Watches a lot of YouTube videos on tips and building a great skincare routine. I am open to trying new products. Product quality is more important than price. My favorite brands are Fenty Beauty and Charlotte Tilbury. The pains is that not all brands cater to my skin tone. When I find one that does, I'm more loyal to them. Products not doing what they promised they would, which is a waste of money. Too many brands to choose from. You know, with TikTok, there's always a new brand and new products, and some have false reviews, so it's hard to tell which is gonna be good and which is gonna be bad. One of the quotes I put in here was that, I want to feel like I've bought the best product. So even though I've said that my favorite brands are Fenty Beauty or Charlotte Tilbury, it doesn't mean all my skincare is expensive. What are my barriers to Beauty Pie? I don't understand the membership. I just wanted to buy the product. Paying membership plus the product doesn't feel like I'm getting a good deal. There's a lot more emphasis on saving money, how much cheaper the products are to their competitors rather than how good the product is. And it looks a bit clinical, which is okay for skincare, but makeup should be fun. So a second competitor analysis 
with Charlotte Tilbury and Fenty Beauty. And this is more about how they present their product pages. So here are the, a few things that stand out with Fenty Beauty and Charlotte Tilbury. They both have beautiful and engaging photography, which makes their products look luxurious. Products are shown on models, which sells the look rather than just a lip gloss. Fenty and Charlotte Tilbury focus on promoting their product as the best quality and focusing on features and less highlight on the price. The non-member price for Beauty Pie is way more expensive than the Fenty Beauty and Charlotte Tilbury. So to me, if I was considering trying out Beauty Pie to see if I like their products, that alone would put me off because I could get products that I know are really popular. These are two really popular lip glosses. So I have more confidence in them rather than trying a new brand that's more expensive. So if we go back to the brief, they ask when is the right time to involve stakeholders? For me, it's when I have good understanding of the research so the discussion can be valuable. After getting data and creating personas and understanding the buying behavior of our users, this is when I would have a stakeholders workshop. I would conduct a stakeholder workshop to outline a purchasing information seeking journey. This workshop will include engineers. This helps them to understand upcoming proposed changes. The goal of the workshop is to get buy-in for proposed changes from owners, stakeholders of different functions, especially if changes are radical. To have a common understanding of our users and problem areas, to understand how we rank amongst competitors in the beauty space, to work collaboratively to solve problems and to come up with a variety of ideas together. So this would be one of the workshop activities where we outline our main personas because you usually have more than one based on purchasing behaviors and the journey from awareness to loyal customers and all the different touch points that they see online with us along with how they engage with our competitors. Step six is the potential outcomes of the workshop. So this is where I would use my imagination of what would come out of the workshop. What changes do I want to make? So introduce more vibrant and fun photography, introduce more products being photographed on models, introduce a free trial or one-off membership price purchase. This allows new users to discover the quality of the product and the value of Beauty Pie. Surface the price of the membership instead of hiding it and change the non-membership prices to align with competitors or highlight which competitors they charge for similar ingredients. So what I found is that a lot of Beauty Pie's messaging talks about how they're just as good as their competitors, but am I getting something that's similar to Fenty Beauty or am I getting something that's similar to Pat McGrath, which is way more expensive? I know they can't talk about other brands directly, but could they allude to it? And then next, I would show them designs and bring those to life. You don't have to create super flashy designs, but I thought it was important as they mentioned engineering handoff. And I know the job that they're hiring for is for their mobile team. So I had to show some UI skills and some prototyping skills. Here is the design. So let's see the prototype. It's a little bit slow, but as you can see, I've introduced video, which is more fun. And we can see the model using the product. Here I've introduced a feature where you can change the model's skin tone so the user can see how it would look on different types of skin tones. You can also see still pictures. And if we scroll down, it's a little bit buggy. So the member price now has a free trial. The user doesn't feel disappointed and they can get this product at the low price that they saw. And the monthly price is 10 pounds a month. So next steps in this project would be test proposed changes with the users using clear metrics for success. Work with engineers to determine feasibility of building the proposed changes, the, the new videos and the skin color picker. Negotiate where to use existing components from the design system and if we have the capacity to build new components. So this is about working with engineers. The work is considered ready to build once engineers are happy with the scope and design has given a ready to build handover file. So further steps, have a strong social media presence that is more organic, a stronger presence on TikTok, especially with the dupe trend. I've noticed that Beauty Pie mentions how their products are similar to ones in the market, but offer users a better price. So there's a huge dupe trend on TikTok and 
I feel like that would be great for Beauty Pie to also use to sell products. A nice way to end your presentation is by mentioning what you would do differently or how you would further push this project if you had the time and more information to do so. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like button. Maybe you're in the middle of interviews or you might have to do an assignment in the future. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below or ask me on Twitter and I'll try my best to help you out. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.